the 2015 Toyota Camry SE. Look, I'm at the training center in Dallas-Fort Worth. This is a white SE right here. This is the car. A little bit of sports, a little bit of class, great gas mileage. You know, everybody comes in that's making their move to a Toyota from a domestic car, they're always asking for the V6. You've got to get them to drive this four cylinder. This is an amazing car. 35 miles per gallon on the highway, with gas still being high at the pump, this car puts money back in your pocket. If you look at the engine technology, everybody talks about horsepower and torque. I, why does that even come up with a four cylinder car? I, are you buying a four cylinder car to race your neighbor? You're buying a four cylinder car because it gets great gas mileage and you want it to have ample power. Forget about the numbers, have them drive the car. This is a very powerful car, equipped with a lot of fun stuff. The engine technology of a Toyota is a thinking engine. Here's what it thinks about. It thinks about load. Well, when I drive this car by myself, it's just my body weight. But I add four more adults. We're on the way to the golf course. So I got five guys in the car weighing 200 pounds a piece. You know how much that is, right? That's a thousand pounds. So I've added a thousand pounds to a car that weighs a little over 3,000 pounds. So I've upped the weight by 25%. Now you need more throttle to move the car at the same speed. The computer goes, wow, there's load on the car and the engine breathes bigger. The dual independent variable valve timing will increase the breathing pattern of the engine to compensate for my buddies going to the golf course. An engine that can think. It also thinks if I'm pulling a grade. Remember, if I'm pulling a grade, I need more throttle. The engine has to work harder and the wheel speed is slower so the car anticipates the grade and breathes bigger to make the grade. Why would you upgrade to a six cylinder if you knew the Ford would work for you? And the last thing is RPM. Any Toyota driven over 4,000 RPMs, the dual independent variable valve timing will lift and give you a bigger breathing pattern. More air, more fuel, more power. But the engine tries to never do this. When it's not necessary, it runs as the smallest displacement. That's why the gas mileage is so high. Sell a Toyota Camry to somebody, tell them the gas mileage, ask them to call you back after the first trip. They'll say, oh my, it exceeded the gas mileage because Toyotas think with the client. Think about that next time you talk about engine technology. No horsepower and torque on a four-cylinder car. It shouldn't be mentioned by any manufacturer. Drive the car, explain the technology, ask for the right amount of money. Always love talking about the transmissions on Toyota. I guess if you really want to bore a customer to death, talk about a transmission, but our transmissions work with the engine I just talked about. So we've got a six-speed transmission, but it's a thinking transmission. If you drive a car, let's say you can hear the traffic in the background, and some of these people are already running late to work. They're weaving in and out of traffic, and bam, they're in the throttle. Bam, they're in the throttle. Bam, they're in the throttle. And so what happens is you drive the car that way every day. The transmission has the ability to memorize the driving habits of the main driver and change the shift pattern. If you're one of these people that really doesn't need to be anywhere in a hurry, um, and, and you drive real slow every day, then the transmission is going to have more lag. The shift points are going to be wider and it's going to give you better gas mileage. The cool thing about a Toyota is I sell this car five years from now. The driver that buys the car drives completely different than me. And over time, the transmission will readjust to the new main driver. Along with this, there's grade logic. If you're driving in a mountainous area and you pull a grade, the transmission talks to the computer and the computer says, I'm pulling a grade and it'll change the shift pattern. It uses grade logic. It can get rid of sixth gear and get rid of fifth gear. So you go to fourth gear. Now remember, fourth gear is the tallest torque producing gear. Fifth and sixth are overdrive. So all you have to do is go up a mountain and it'll shift back into fourth to give you greater ability to pull that grade. When you're coming down the backside of the mountain, wheel RPing up, throttle down, 
Once you tap the brakes, the transmission gets rid of sixth and fifth, you're in fourth, using a little bit of engine braking down the grade. So, a learning transmission and grade logic, and we also have artificial intelligence. So the transmission realizes changes, subtle changes in road surface, subtle changes in driving characteristics, and makes adaptions based upon the way you're driving today. Let the customer know that this car is gonna be not a Camry, but their personal car programmed to the way they drive. Explain the technology, ask for the money. There it is right there. I've got a good friend that runs a dealership in Cleveland, Ohio, and he tells all of his salespeople, the first thing you need to learn is the STAR safety system. ABS, EBD, brake assist, vehicle stability control, traction control, and smart stop. If you can tell somebody that this car is gonna be safe and they've got a family, then you've increased the desire for the car. One thing I love about the Camry is 10 airbags. We have a passenger's knee airbag, because passengers have knees, a driver's knee airbag, side bolster airbags, and this year the side curtain airbag is different than last year. It's about 30% wider than it was in the previous generation Camry, and it deploys and holds the air in the side curtain airbag for a full six seconds. Before it was inflate and deflate. So now, in the unlikely event of a rollover, you're protected. So star safety system, 10 airbags, sell safety because the customer wants to make sure that the car is gonna be safe for their family. Make this big and ask for the money. Over my shoulder is a gorgeous sunrise in Dallas-Fort Worth. Another blue sky day, another great day to sell Toyotas. Remember, every day that you sell a Toyota to somebody, you're selling them a car that is gonna be the best car they've ever owned. They're gonna get their money back, somebody else is gonna want this car, and the chances are they're gonna be a Toyota customer for life. Don't let somebody leave your dealership and go up the road and get influenced by a four or five or $6,000 rebate. We all know the story. If a company sells a car and adds a rebate, four or five years from now, three years from now, the customer wants to trade out of that car, the rebates killed the resale value of the car. Camrys, all year long, listen, for the last decade, we've been running a 199 lease somewhere during the year. How can you drive the number one selling car in America, the best mid-size sedan ever made at 199 a month plus tax? Do your math work. Let your customers understand the difference between leasing and buying. Bring this Camry back in two to three years, certify it, and sell it again. Let me give you the history of Camry. Camry started in 1983. It was a great upsized car from what Toyota had in the lineup. The real change for Camry came in 1992 when they stretched the car and it became the si same size car on the road as the domestic cars out there. They added a V6. Yeah, the first V6 we ever had was 1988, a powerhouse 156 horsepower. S see where we've gone from where we've been. The 2015 Camry is a bold step out, a big grill. Everybody talks about, wow, that grill's controversial. Look at the cars on the road today. Look at Audi, look at everybody. They're all copying the grill. It's big, it's bold, it's bad. Make sure that when you're selling a Camry that you add passion because the car's right here. No excuses for the car. Best mid-sized car in the history of mid-sized cars. So now it's up to you. Get aggressive, let the customer know. Not only do I wanna sell you this car, when you get through with it, I really, really want it back because I'll have another home for it. This has been KC Nix on a busy Monday morning in Dallas-Fort Worth. People going to work, they need a new car. The Saturday morning meeting, PK52. See you next week.